Welcome to the night team Solomon Circus Live Duel. Today we have Trellements versus Trellements Punk. Just gonna shuffle the deck over here, you know. Before we get into the deck, uh, before we get into the duel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we're gonna see some high rolls. We're gonna see the player in the left start off over here on the white mat. Oh, we're going to see play on the right start off with an E-Telly, actually. My bad. I'm going to summon out these Yaman here. I fit the effect of Yaman. Paying 600. Searching out the Foxy Tune here. You know, a great extender. Cra kind of crazy how a level 3 or E-Telly just itself is just uh, absolutely cracked. We're going to fit the effect of Foxy, you know, discarding. Not for cost here. Um, so having this is going to be able to activate the effect. Important to know that you do not show your opponent what you're discarding. Um, but he's something about the deer note here. Uh, activating the happiness, I'm going to shuffle him back the Shiren and itself for the kit. Searching for the meta noise here. Here we're going to synchro off into the Pega Ruler. Pega Ruler is going to be able to activate the effects here. Um, and do you know what's going to summon back the Xeomon here? We're going to see a mill of Merly, Halfness, Instant Fusion, a Polymerization, as well as King of the Swamp here. We're going to add the, uh, the Halfness to hand, not activating Merly effect. Going for the uh, Merly using the King of the Swamps as well as itself to go for the Millennium Eye. You know, having a negate on field. Not bad at all. Interesting that they chose to go with the um, the Merly effect rather than, you know, adding it to hand. Um, valuing that, uh, that Millennium Eye over, you know, the like, milling aid option with the kit. Or I see them going to Hulk here, summoning out the Falco, which means most likely it's because it's going to be the wind to play here. We're going to see the effect of Kit, you know, being tributed off and summoning Merly or summoning the Havness. Then going to Mill 5. We see a DD Crow. Unfortunately, the camera is just not able to pick it up all of it. We see a DD Crow or two DD Crows. And I guess it looks like they whiffed. Or, no, he can shuffle back to make a fusion. So he's making the Dragos Topelia here. Interesting, he's not going for the wind to play. Here, we're going to banish two to summon out the Pepega Ruler, a light in the dark. We're going to link both of those off into a Barone here. Setting two cards and passing. So we do have three negates plus a, uh, a Hulk effect. I guess Dragos Topelia is not considered technically a negate. Um, and it looks like we're going to go see just straight to game two here. Not revealing their deck is very, very crucial. Um, especially when they can't beat that board. We did see a Veiler in hand. I think that was drawn for turn. Just sealed the deal there. Um, sometimes a smart play not to let your opponent see what you're playing. You don't want them to be able to side correctly. Especially like in a big tournament. Um, a lot of the time at locals, your opponent will know you. So it may not always be like the best. But if you switch your deck up or use the same color sleeves, I definitely think it's uh, worth considering here. Very interesting that he went for such like a big board like that. I haven't seen Trail Element make a, a board like that for a bit. Here we're going to see some shuffling up, you know, making sure the deck is not all clumped together, especially with the punk cards. You know, you don't want them all to be in one clump due to them being in the graveyard. Most likely always at the same time, you know, with your Xeomin, your Foxy, and then your uh, Deer Note, stuff like that. You want them to all be spread out throughout the deck. And we're going to see most likely tier on the left go first. We're going to activate the planet here, um, searching for the 
for a most likely a rhino heart unless the rhino heart's already in hand going for the shiren here Activating Shiren right off the bat, discarding the Beast to draw, or to mill three. And Beast Effect's going to let him draw one card. I guess they're both playing the Punk Engine here. Very interesting. We're going to see a e Tele being activated here. 78 AZ Yaman. Still have not used their normal summon yet. Ziamon effect uh, will activate here, paying the 600, searching for the Foxy Tune. Normal summoning the Merly here, milling three. We do see a King of the Swamp, a Rhino Heart, as well as a, is that a Dragon or a Falco? You know, summoning with the Rhino Heart by discarding a um, Trailment. We're going to see a Trap. And you know, reading the card, making sure that, you know, they know what they're doing. And then we're going to see both effects being activated here. Chain Link 1 and Chain Link 2. Setting the Havness and adding a Havness. You know, saving that for possibly the next turn. Havness effect is going to be activated. Um, fusing here. Fusing with the Merly as well as the Halfness. Um, going for the Kit. Kit effect's going to be activated here. Searching for the Trap card. And whenever one of these uh, Chelmet monsters go to the graveyard, they can also summon out one Awinda. Um, very, very powerful here. We're going to see an overlay here for, is that going to be a Abyss Dweller? An Abyss Dweller here, crazy card versus the um, the tier matchup. You know, pretty much just an auto win. We're going to see during the standby phase, um, uh, Abyss Dweller being activated here, sending the Rhino Heart. Um, with two set cards as well. And we know what happens in hand. We're going to see the planet be activated. You know, adding a Chelin monster. I'm be quite interested to see what the Chelins actually do here. Is that a cross out in their deck as well? Going out for the, uh, for the Rhino Heart. We're going to see King of the Swamp be activated, searching for a polymerization here. You know, maybe maybe indicating that they have two, uh, two tiers in hand. But that Dweller really makes it difficult because, like, even if they do have the tier monsters, what are you really going to do, right? But you have to get over that Abyss Dweller or else, you know, they just have full. We're going to see the Kari Curry being activated here. Um, Divine Incarnate, tributing off the Divine, uh, the Dweller, Summon itself. Interesting tech here. You see, you know, it tributes off effects that have been activated, so. We do have, you know, the Dweller off the field. And we're going to be able to attack. It does gain 1,500 attack. So it has 3,000 at the moment. We're going to see Foxy Effect being activated. Once again, discarding it for the, with the other monster. Um, you actually only activate by discarding the Foxy. And then you discard the other card. So we're going to see uh, Foxy, you know, 
summon out these Yaman. Now let's see if he activates the Yaman effect. He does know that he does have a um, the the deer note in hand here. So he tributes off the deer note to summon out or tribute off the Karakuri to summon out the deer note here. Very interesting. We're gonna see a meta noise being activated, flipping the deer note face down. Which he knew he searched, so it's kind of interesting. Merly is gonna be sent off the meta noise, activating its effects. Using itself and Beast, or I believe Beast? Yeah, itself and Beast. To summon out Winda here, it's going to be very difficult. And here, just going to scoop it up, you know, going into game three. Winda on field, as well as only one card left in hand, is very, very interesting. I personally wonder if myself, I wouldn't have activated um, Deer Note in hand to... Uh, to not be able because I knew my opponent had meta noise because he searched it off the um he searched it so you know you know he is going to most likely stop your you know your synchro plays but he's not going to stop your battle phase and I mean he possibly could but at that time you're still able to tribute over the uh the set divine for your deer note because you have not normal summoned yet um so you know maybe trying to force out the battle phase and see if your monster does get flipped face down um and at that point, even then, you can tribute off your Deer Note or your Karakuri after the battle phase if it does not get flipped down because Meta Noise requires you to have a Terrellman monster on the field. Unfortunate that he did have the uh, he did have the Deer Note in hand. Um, play possibly also a good thing because you know you don't want Habdus to mill either. If you would have actually the Ziam in here, you could have you know. Potentially get a halfness uh, effect, so not very good, but we'll see both players entering game three here. Terraforming me activated, adding the primitive planet. I think it's very interesting how the deck uh, operates because it almost wants to go second. This going second card is so crazy. We see the primitive planet search for a Shiren. Then all of a sudden, there's Yaman adding the Foxy. Here, Fox is going to activate once again, discarding. Um, it does not discard for cost. But Rhino Heart, you know, Fox summoning out the Deer Note here. Let's see if Rhino Heart's going to activate, which is going to by sending. The Shiren from Hand of Field or Hand of Graveyard. Activating the effect, sending the Murley. So we're going to see two effects being able to activate here. The Murley, as well as the Shiren. I'm going to shuffle both of those back, going in for, for the kit here. I guess only activating one of the effects. Switching for the amount of noise. We're going to see a Synchro Summon into the, uh, the Pepega Ruler, milling five as well as summoning back the Jamin. DD Crow is going to be added to hand. Crazy add back, especially in the mirror match. Um, even versus Sprite, it's not bad at all. Um, versus Rika, it's also not great, but it also can affect a lot of it. Like hitting that Strena when it tributes itself off is extremely huge. Um, or even pedal during the end phase or princess. Stopping any tier monsters is obviously huge as well. I see a synchro off in, or a link off into the Hockey Fibrax. Somebody know the Falco. You know, being able to search, searchably make a window here is kind of crazy rather than like relying on the mills of your trailman monsters.
Gonna make a barrel and the flur here, you know, summoning out the Havness by tributing all well, using the effect of kit summoning the Havness. And then milling five here. You see a nib, a Havness, a Sleek, or that was a Merly, a Sleek. I believe that's an Ash Blossom and another card here. So Salik here is going to activate, adding the uh, adding a Chilling Monster, which is going to be the Havness here. You know, if you want to play on your opponent's turn, it's kind of huge. And then we're going to uh, see no other tier monsters being activated. That's not quite unfortunate. Does he not play Dweller is my question. He does have two level fours. We're going to see... Fusion Substitute being activated, returning the kit to the extra deck. Interesting that he's doing that now. We're going to see, going for IP instead. Maybe he doesn't play Dweller, setting two cards and passing. You know, not ending with any tier monsters. It's kind of, kind of crazy. We're going to see a Dark Ruler being activated here. Um, insane that he's not able to negate that. You know, if you have any card to chain, you can chain here to, you know, at least know what's going to go through. You're going to see a normal summon of Ziam and actually the effect here. You're going to see Halfness be chained. You know, I guess hopingly that they mill a um, tier, but they do not. Searching for the Foxy Tune. Or they have two, they activate, they had. Didi Crow and Shiren, so they're going to activate the Shiren, summoning out the Winda. You know, very, very crucial here. Permanent Plant not popping these Yamans, kind of interesting. There's really no reason not to do that. We're going to see Ziamen. B. Uh, here we're going to see a Instant Fusion being activated here. Going to be chaining Cross out to Instant Fusion. Calling Instant Fusion here. Punishing his own to negate the effects of instant fusion if that is going to resolve That's kind of crazy. I haven't seen that before but what a play It's going to resolve that's insane Stopping that instant fusion is huge They're gonna activate foxy effect activate here it looks like it's going to go through. Discarding. They have Super Poly in hand here. Discarding the Rhino Heart. Summoning out the Deer Note. That's their only Deer Note. This our only special in this turn. We're going to with Super Poly here, discarding the uh, Polymerization, using the Winda, and the Havness for their own Winda. For Dragos to Pelia here, very, very valid. Um, but I don't know if this is enough for game. We're going to see, you know, Havness being activated, summoning... Um, I'm shuffling, shuffling back three for the kit or for the Kaleido Heart. Kaleido Heart can activate here. And not activating the Primitive Planet here is very interesting as well. Uh, he's going to activate the, um, the effect and chain. He's going to pop and that's going to be game. So we do see the player on the right, you know, winning. Interestingly, he's playing cards like, uh, like, um, the... 
the cross out came very very clutch in here but you know sometimes it just happens that way um good games